I wanted to see how practical it would be to use a 100 watt solar panel like this is had it on my gate opener but the the actuator broke so i decided to give it a try for water heating this is a heating element it's a low voltage um, double dc heating element i got from missouri wind and solar it's designed just for this type of application mm -hmm. i've got this board I drilled a hole perpendicular just left the long drill bit in it this is how i can tell uh, if it's oriented perpendicular to the sun, you can see it's a little bit off from the house and so forth And I'm getting it set up today. It should be sunny tomorrow and we'll we'll try to do it tomorrow This shadow here when you orient it, I'll move it around so you can see See how it changes when you get that shadow to a minimum It's pretty much perpendicular where you want it. So now I'm gonna have to readjust it we, when the sun comes up, we're going to measure the current with this clamp-on meter here. Right now it's not on. We don't have enough sun to give any current right at the moment. I've also got this shunt-type meter uh, purchased off Amazon. It comes from China. I've got 4,004.5 grams. I weighed it out on a top-loading balance I have, so I know exactly how much is in there. So, and we'll see how they compare. And uh, so, we're going to wait for the sun to come up, then we'll get started. Okay, it's 10 o'clock. Got the DC clamp meter. This is on the DC 40 amp scale. We're reading 5.6 amps. This thing now has enough voltage on it. It won't work if the voltage is too low. As you can see, we're measuring 14.2 volts there, 5.8 on current. Very similar to uh, what this is, a little bit different, 82.7 watts. Now this little symbol over here to the right is watt hours. So that's accumulating energy over time. I reset it at 10 o'clock since it now had enough uh, voltage to operate. I checked the voltage over here directly on the element. It was 13.5 volts. So we'll check the uh, water temperature at this point and see if there's been any difference. leave that in there for a minute put this little digital temperature gauge in there okay let's stir it up a little bit I think I'll give us an accurate reading It'd be best if we had a stir in here but we don't so we'll just have to make do okay we've gone from already from 15 degrees C up to 23.7 all right, we're going to let this run for at least another, we're going to let it run all day. Then we'll periodically measure the temperature and, and these other uh, parameters, and we'll see what we got. Oh, well, I need to mention one thing. This is a Craftsman clamp meter. I've had it several years. It's a 82-369, 400 amp AC-DC clamp meter. So we're looking, really working at the low end of this. This is a can't see it in this direction. That's a, that's a hundred amp shunt, so it's, it's it's a very low resistance. So they measure the voltage across that and calculate the current. Um, so anyway, it's hard to say what's more accurate, this or this. Um, so we'll just see what we get towards the end of the day. Okay, it's one o'clock. Um, we'll see where we're at. 5.35 on current. Actually falling off slightly for the, over the last hour. This device is reading 14.18 volts, 5.74 current, 81.2 watts for power. And the sum total of the energy is 249 watt hours, according to that. Um, so... Still working good. I'm going to continue to run this. The water's getting pretty warm. It's up to uh, 65 degrees Celsius. So we'll let it run for another hour or two and and uh, and stop and do some calculations. Good way to bore a YouTube audience to put them to sleep is to, to bore them with a lot of data.
So, but I thought that people watching this are probably got similar interests. So I'm just going to put this here and quicker review what it is. This is our data. It was taken on March 8th, 2021. I got the mass of the water, the elevation here, the boiling point of water at that elevation. Now I use that to check the uh, the accuracy of the thermometers I had, which by the way were not good, but the digital one was better, so I used it. I just arbitrarily made a decision to use the uh, clamp current uh, rather than the uh, shunt current. Uh, I outlined or colored in blue the uh, data where I used it for the actual calculations. The other, I'm just leaving it here is for comparison. This is how I went through some calculations using the specific heat of water and uh, so forth. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it now, but if you have an interest, you can, you can I guess, pause the screen and go back and take a look at it. Okay, I'm going to review our results. We used uh, slightly over one gallon of water, which was heated from 59.7 degrees F to 176 degrees F over a six-hour period from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m on March 8th, 2021, using one 100 watt solar panel in the Six Mile, South Carolina area. We calculated the heat input generated for the above delta T, all this is done in Celsius, and then calculating the heat required to increase the temperature of a 38 gallon hot water tank from 59.7 to 120 because the 176 was way hotter than we needed. This indicated a minimum of 14 100 watt solar panels would be required under similar conditions. My calculations indicated that actually 1900 watt panels were necessary, but we had thermal losses of 28% from the calculated electrical heat energy. And this was due to opening the, the top, stirring with a cold thermometer, etc. These things would not occur if the element was installed in a water heater tank. So I decided 14 panels was probably more realistic because uh, in a heater tank, you're not going to have the evaporation and so forth. The above only applies for a clear day in March in Six Mile, South Carolina, or a somewhere latitude somewhere. A cloudy day or a different time of year would affect results. We found if our ground mount system that a cloudy rainy day, you're lucky if you get 10% of what you get on a, on a clear day. In this case, the solar panel was continuously repositioned to follow the sun um, using that uh, drill bit and the board, but I removed it after adjusting it uh, to make sure that we got maximum solar energy. This is our experimental apparatus. We This included a 100-watt Instapark panel. I think I originally bought it from Amazon. A low-voltage submersible DC double water heater element from Missouri Wind and Solar. Um, and a homemade counter-aminer, really just a one gallon water heater. A Craftsman DC AC clamp meter and voltmeter. And it had this Bayite DC 6.5 to 100 volt and zero to 100 amp current shunt for comparison only. This could have been more accurate, it was interesting to use it and I'll do some further work with it, but uh, I just arbitrarily picked the clamp current. We used both a digital and gas thermometer stirring the water to make sure it was a uniform temperature I used the digital data since it was more accurate measuring ice water and boiling water. Um, that way I, I could calibrate it. A better, more precise thermometer would be better, but I think this was okay for this. The equation to calculate the heat energy uh, going into the water was, uh, in this case, C, which down here is the specific heat of water. And I used 4.186 joules per gram degree C times the mass, which in, uh, is in grams, in our case, just over 4,000, 4,004.5, I believe, and uh, times the delta T in degrees C. And this was just a change in temperature. Our conclusions were that, uh, you know, 100 watt solar panels can be purchased on Amazon these days for $100 or less. But even 1,400 watt panels would cost around 1,400 plus installation costs and then realistically in this area, there are a lot of days where solar power is minimal due to clouds or rain. We are considering whether this is worth it to have hot water available when the electric grid goes down. Since we presently have a 12 kilowatt ground mount grid tie system without a battery, it may make more sense in our case, put that money into a Tesla Powerwall the equivalent like an Enphase or Generac storage battery.
this is a plot of temperature and clamp current versus time. And uh, over here we got temperature degree C. Over here we got clamp current and amps. This is time of day from 9 to 3 o'clock. 9 o'clock, there really wasn't enough voltage to get good current. Uh, in fact, it was too low to even operate the shunt uh, meter. So a lot of my calculations I did from 10 to 3 o'clock. But you can see all through the day, even at 9 o'clock, we started getting a temperature rise. It started leveling out about noontime. Uh, but it was continuing to go up when I literally pulled the plug on the experiment at 3 o'clock. Now this, now this is a similar uh, plot, uh, in this case temperature. But we're plotting temperature degree C here against or, or with the element voltage in uh, uh, DC. Now I measured this directly on the contacts to the heating element that was in my little homemade water heater. You can see it's a similar profile to what the current did because the voltage is really what's driving the current. Now, a final plot just to show that it's clamp current versus element voltage, clamp current here versus element voltage here, ignoring the nine o'clock data just from 10 o'clock to uh, uh, three o'clock. But you can see it's a linear regression here is, it shows it's pretty much straight line, which you would expect the primary driver of the current being the voltage. So I hope you enjoyed this. I'm going to finish up us on uh, a uh, image of the spreadsheet data with some buttons you can click on to subscribe or to uh, uh, look at some of our videos. Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you.